Welcome to the video. My name's Steven. In this video, I want to talk about one of the most important um, belief switches that I've had in all of my entrepreneurial journey and honestly in my life, and that is non-binary thinking. And I had just recently watched a video called The Genius Contradiction by Sam Ovens, and I just like, it like, I don't know, it re-brought this thought into my head because um, I hadn't thought about it in a while. So I felt like maybe I'd make a video for uh, you guys, and obviously, I'm not just going to like regurgitate exactly what Sam Oven said, um, but it has something to do with kind of what he's talking about, and then also um, the rest of these belief switches and some of these ideas. A lot of it came from Charlie Morgan and Alex Ramosi. I don't want to take credit um, for something that's not mine, if that makes sense. Um, but I felt like there's probably someone out there that who's Hadn't heard it, and so I figured I would make this video for you. If you like this content, go ahead and subscribe. If you don't know me, my name's Stephen Donaghy. I make YouTube videos for people to watch who are interested in psychology and whatever the fuck I'm thinking about who are interested in the same kind of shit as me. So, yeah. Um, here we are. We're talking about non-binary thinking. So, I guess just to kind of delineate on this, the first thing I'd like to talk about is labels. Um, and it's not only just labels from yourself, but labels from other people. And here's a label that fit into my lifestyle very, very well for all my time in college. And then even after not, I'm an alcoholic, but I'm an alcoholic. Um, this was a label that I had placed on myself. What that did was it, it, psychologically put this as like something that's like yes like i am this and so i don't have to worry about anything else like i'm always going to be this i'm an alcoholic i will always be an alcoholic um it's part of my nature it's part of who i am it's um it's what i am and i had this belief about myself i'm an alcoholic i'm an alcoholic another belief um that I had about myself too was uh, I'm a pothead. And I'm going to tell you basically how I broke down these two beliefs because these are A, like bad beliefs, and B, they were true then, but they're not true anymore. So I was able to break, like, these are problems. Like, I don't know about you, but if you're a pothead or an alcoholic or if you've ever been one, you know how hard it is to quit that stuff. So, <clears throat> these were two beliefs I had about myself. And these were the labels that I had placed over the person I was supposed to be and the person I was going to become. So, uh, I'm just going to erase the I'm a pothead part and, and go over the I'm an alcoholic one. And I'll show you exactly how I was able to break this belief with what I'm going to be talking about. So, I'm an alcoholic. I learned eventually that it's not I'm an alcoholic, but the question or the statement you should be making instead is to what extent am I an, am I, uh, to what extent am I an alcoholic? Or this first sentence that I wrote here, this is a statement. So to what to, am I? I'm an alcoholic. This is a statement. Period. Right? I'm an alcoholic. This second line that I've written here is to what extent am I an alcoholic, which is a question. And questions have answers. This right here, this first sentence is a label, right? So I've created this label and I've blocked it off in my head that I will always be that way, that there's no fixing it. This one requires me to think. The, the question requires me to think, right? To what extent am I an alcoholic? How much of an alcoholic am I? Where this one was more of just like, I'm an alcoholic. And I labeled myself as such, and so I didn't do anything to fix it until I learned about this. So, to what extent am I an alcoholic? And I almost just want to, like, like, here we go, 1 to 10, like, 1 to 10, to what extent am I an alcoholic? And maybe this is a question you should be asking yourself. This is, like, the first step into fixing this problem. And I'm going to show you how all this kind of ties into non-binary binary thinking. Well, actually, here, this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is... The continuum, right? This is a continuum. This is binary, right? 
Alcoholic versus not alcoholic. Continuum. To what extent? And notice how there's arrows on each side. Uh, saying that you can go further on this line of this continuum. Right? So to what extent am I an alcoholic? Well, back in 2022, uh, I would say I was probably about like a nine. So here's me. I'm like a nine alcoholic. And I want to get to a one. Like this is where I was. This is 2021 me. About a nine alcoholic. Honestly, could have even been a ten. I'm just maybe making myself feel better. And then today I'm at like a two. Possibly. The only reason I say I'm at a two is because I got a couple of drinks the other night. But other than that, I haven't drank in like four months. Otherwise, I would usually be a one. But I just feel like that's deserving. And I don't want to lie and say that I'm completely sober. I did have a few drinks a couple nights ago. So here I am now. I'm at the two and I used to be at a nine. Um, and this is the continuum. And this is what, you know, makes it non-binary, right? Binary, one or the other. Alcoholic, not alcoholic. This is a continuum. Right? So this is the first step to kind of like breaking down this label. So this is step one of breaking down the label. And step two, hold on. I'm going to mess with my camera for a second. All right. And step two is to do what uh, I think this was Albert Einstein. Uh, invert and revert. Or uh, it was something like that. It was like something along the lines of like, Invert, yeah, invert then revert. That's exactly what it was. Hold on, I'm I'm messing with the camera. I'm sorry. I know. I just anyway, invert, revert. You've established that it's a continuum. Whatever this problem is that you have, now you inverted. So, um, what can I do to stay an alcoholic? And you can apply this to any label you've placed on yourself. I I, I actually don't think anything besides physiological traits are non-changeable right and even some physiological physiological traits you can change um but i wouldn't because like what's the point but i mean you can change your character traits you 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 know like you're, you're always gonna have five fingers or like if you have four fingers you're always gonna have four fingers but like and maybe you were born that way you know maybe you were born with like the, and even still you get like botox and whatever but my point is you shouldn't really change physiological things and you should embrace um, you should embrace the person that you were born as. However, you were not born an alcoholic or not a morning person um, or you were not born a druggie or someone who's addicted to porn or like a calm person. Like, it didn't even have to be negative stuff, right? You weren't born this way. So some of these traits you can fix and you don't have to think that, oh, like another one I hear too is like, oh, I'm a cancer. So that's why I'm rude or whatever. You know, like people try to like blame their stars or whatever. Uh, what's that? What's that called? Astrology. They're like astrology map. I don't necessarily know if I believe in that stuff, but like people will try to blame that. It's like why they're a dick. It's like, you're just a dick, bro. And you should try to fix that. So what can I do to stay an alcoholic? Well, I would probably drink and drive. I would probably go to bars. I would probably um, be around people who drink. I would probably alcohol. I, I never know how to spell this shit. Alcoholics. Um, yeah, I'll just put three examples on there for now, right? I'll, I'll I'd probably go to bars and I'd drink and drive and I'd be around alcoholics. So. What can you, the now that you've inverted it, right? This is the inverted side. Now you can revert it. So instead of what can I do to stay an alcoholic, it's now how to not be an alcoholic. But you've learned because you've inverted the thing originally. So now you know better because you can see that like, okay, I should probably not drink and drive. And you get my point here is like not drink and drive not go to bars, and then, like, not be around alcoholics. And what ends up happening is, <clears throat> over enough time, 
you do this stuff and this these are the so this stuff on the right here these are the traits of someone who's not an alcoholic and the stuff on the left is the traits of people who are alcoholics so with enough time proof will get developed that you are no longer an alcoholic and so then you will be further on the opposite side of the scale as you were before not only in the eyes of yourself <clears throat> but in the eyes of others but get rid of all that and i'm not going to raise it just yet so you can look at it a little bit again remember to what extent invert and revert and then do the fucking thing and then that's how you get the trait of a non-alcoholic person so but basically if you get rid of all that and you don't do any of this critical thinking that's called critical thinking by the way everything i just showed you that is critical thinking if you get rid of all that this i'm an alcoholic is a label this is binary yes or no or am i an alcoholic yes and then you've labeled that on yourself and you've capped your ability to grow because what if one day you need to not be an alcoholic you you can't fix that if you don't think non-binarily right that's an example with a character trait so um, if you have any of these character traits inside of yourself these are uh the way you truly believe about yourself get rid of that because it's not useful right and i've done this all the time i i had this other one that was a really really big like belief switch that i had to make for myself was i I'm scared of rejection. I had this weird thought that I was like, I'm scared of rejection. But then when I really thought about it, I wasn't scared of rejection. It was just like a reasoning that I put in my head as to why things weren't going my way. When in reality, it was to what extent am I scared of rejection? And when I really thought about it, I wasn't. That was my excuse as to why I wasn't closing sales. That was my excuse as to why I was the kind of person that I was and it all came down to this I wasn't I was scared of rejection and when I really thought about it I was like you know what I'm not actually scared of rejection um I just use that as an excuse and so you know and and after enough time I had made enough cold calls and I made enough sales and I talked to enough people on the phone to where I realized I'm actually not scared of rejection the next part of non-binary thinking <clears throat> Is, and this is one that I kind of just learned a little bit more recently. This is more of the Sam of inside of the, of the equation. The first part was more like Alex Ramosi um, logic. This is kind of more Sam Ovens. And it's like this. This is kind of the exact diagram that he drew. It was like kind of like this. And basically, this is you. And you think that like, hold on. I don't really, un I didn't understand his diagram. I'm going to draw, like, here's uh, one side of thing. Here's one side. And here's the other side. And these aren't yes or no questions anymore. This is either or. So instead of yes or no, this is either or. Here's a mistake that I made. I hired some employees to make cold calls for me. And I thought that either I make calls or employees make calls. And what I ended up doing was... Putting everything on this side of the scale, like having my employees make the calls over here, and then I didn't make any calls, right? And I was wondering why shit wasn't going as well. And also on top of that, I had taken care of, I had my client delivery taken care of. And so all I really needed to do was make calls, but I wasn't making calls. So I was just sitting there. For like half the day doing nothing so instead of you know having here's me making the calls and here's the employees making the calls instead of just having the employees make the calls i have now decided i will also make the calls right and the easiest way of uh, looking at this i think and one of the examples that uh sam ovens had was like michael jordan became the best at offensive and defensive uh basketball and that was like unheard of at the time. Like either someone was good offensively, someone was good defensively. And the thing is, he didn't pick a side. He just did. And it's important to not pick a side because 
unless you have mayhem, unless you have like a different form of thinking than everyone else, unless you do something different than everyone else, you're never going to make anything great, right? Because if you're introverted and you believe that only extroverted people are going to get the results that you want, or maybe a couple years later you hear some article and introverted people are the ones that are getting the results that they want, what ends up happening is you pick a side or because, remember, I'm an introvert, you say something about like that about yourself, and so you can never, you can never do extroverted things. Like you always have to do the introverted stuff. You can never do the extroverted stuff. And when it's time to do extroverted stuff, you're like, well, I can't do that because I'm introverted. And I've seen people like this, and these are the worst kind of people to be around. I'm so serious. Um, I've talked about this in some of my videos before, some of my psychology videos. But I will say this hands down. I truly believe that, like. The worst kind of, and you'll see it like the first time you meet them, as soon as you meet that person, they will give you a reason as to why they're who they are and what they do and why they can't be better or become a certain person that does the right things. I, I see this, I don't know, like I might get some hate for this, but like recently I met someone who was like within the first five minutes of meeting them, they were like, I'm bipolar. I was like, dude. Like, that had nothing to do with anything we were talking about. Like, what if right now you need to not be bipolar because we're having a conversation? And I get it. I know that's probably a struggle for a lot of people, but still, it's just like a lot of – and those labels you place on yourself, it's, it's like the stuff you tell people when you meet them too. This is a great point. It's not even just like I'm bipolar. Maybe that was a very extreme example because I feel very extreme sometimes. But people, when you meet them, they just – I they have this – like, I'm this kind of person. I do this, and this is the person that I am. And, like, half the time it's either bullshit or, like, they're so fucking stuck into that person that they talk about how they are uh, that they won't do anything else that's besides that. And if it's, like, I'm an alcoholic, they can't. They won't fix that. They won't change that. And it's, like, to what extent? And what if one day you need not be an alcoholic, right? So I think it's very important to... Not think binarily, but on a continuum. Where am I on this scale between these two sides? And then pick it, don't pick a side, but learn to play the fence. Learn to, to find, ugh, learn to find a happy middle or learn the extremes of both sides. That's how Michael Jordan got good, right? So if we're looking here in my business and this, how I was talking here, right? I've hired people to do outreach over here. And I thought that I didn't have to do outreach anymore. But would the would the vehicle move quicker if I did outreach as well? It probably would. 